hallelujah we carry his glory wherever we go if his glory is not found here we can't take his glory with us amen and that is why we fall face down as your glory it falls and it shines around amen it also will shine through us hallelujah hallelujah amen you know before we we have we have this desire to come to god's house we must have this desire that lord i will give you my best in worship amen i will give you people say i've i've come to god's house so that he will speak to me today so that i will receive a prophetic word or i will receive something amazing that comes by the gifts of the holy spirit but i tell you everything will come out by the amount of worship that we give if we come with a heart to give god who's a debtor to no man will give us much more than we can ever think or imagine amen god is a god who wants to surprise us amen hallelujah he does wonderful things in our lives and his timing is beautiful amen hallelujah amen you see there is one thing when we wait for god's timing there is a bonus that we get when we wait for god's timing and that is a priceless gift you know what is that that's the peace of god when you wait for god's timing the priceless gift that you get from god is his peace you know why god himself will be with you emmanuel god with us and jesus the prince of peace will be with you and he says peace i give to you like the world cannot give it and peace i give that the world cannot take it away hallelujah you know people are coming across situations every day in their life that tries to rob their joy to rob their peace but what a promise we have hallelujah what a promise we have a wonderful promise a powerful promise hallelujah a promise that is true and he said i will never leave you nor shall i ever forsake you even though you go through the waters to the fires i will be with you hallelujah they shall not overcome you they shall not burn you not a hair hair on your head shall be injured uh, shall be burned hallelujah amen not a not a bone of yours will be broken hallelujah our god is a good god amen he takes care of us we try to take care of our children the best and sometimes they slip out of our hand but they are still under the eyes of god hallelujah sometimes i said the children slip out from our hand slip out from our sight but they are in the sight of god hallelujah you and trust your children to god amen we do our part and god will do his hallelujah this morning if your children are away from the lord i tell you this is a word that god has for you that they are coming back god is bringing your children back to him and back to you because god is in the process of restoration he is restoring the hearts of the children back to their parents hallelujah and their hearts back to god hallelujah this is not my message i have not even started my message this morning but this is what the holy spirit says if your children are away and you've been crying you've been praying your children are living with you yet they are away from you god is saying this is the season where he's bringing restoration where your children's heart will be turned to god and to you hallelujah so the lord is saying be sensitive be a father and a mother who forgives don't keep scores or accounts of what they have done forgive them love them embrace them and god will do an amazing work in your life don't d- judge them but bless them god has called us to be a blessing hallelujah because he's a good god and he gives us the best hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord thank you father hallelujah thank you jesus amen this morning i want to speak about the end time outpouring of the holy spirit hallelujah you see the church has been saying god we want more of you more love more power 
more of you in my life. Amen. Why? So that I will worship you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Now God is reminding us this morning from his word that God is not only building his church, but his desire to the word of prophecy that came in the book of Joel in chapter 2 is that he's speaking about the end time pouring, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And God is preparing the church for the end time outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask you one question. If the Holy Spirit all of a sudden falls on your neighborhood, are you able to handle that? Well, God is preparing the church. God is preparing the church for the end time outpouring. God is saying, enough church. You're asking for yourself. You're asking for yourself. But God's heart is not just for the church, but from the church to the nations. Hallelujah. Because God so loved the world. Hallelujah. And so I want you to turn with me in your Bible, Joel chapter 2. And verse 28 onwards to 32, I'm going to read this morning quickly. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Church, I want you to declare this morning, all flesh. All flesh. They include people you don't like. You know, some nationalities cannot get, with, get along with other nationalities. But Joel 2.28 rules out everything. It says, God is going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Whether you like it or you don't like it. But there is one choice you can make this morning. To be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. God does not wa want us just to be spectators. He wants us to participate in things that he has from heaven. Hallelujah. You know something? We are in partnership with Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that God does, he does it through his children, through his sons, through his servants, through his chosen vessels. Hallelujah. And so as I read, it says, I shall pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Do your sons and your daughters prophesy? If they don't, they will prophesy. That's what the Bible says. Unless and until you've decided not to believe what you're reading. It says your sons and your daughters will prophesy. It did not say they may prophesy. They will try to prophesy. And so prophecy is for everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. You know something, when you have the Holy Spirit within you, you have prophecy within you. God wants you to prophesy, to speak by faith, and God will bring that to pass. And he says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Young men shall see visions and also on your men servants and on your maid servants. Hallelujah. Your men and your maid servants, on them too, the Spirit of God will fall. You have a maid servant at home? Spirit of God will fall upon her. You're waiting for your maid servant to come. He'll come. The Spirit of God will fall upon her. Hallelujah. So that you know you're having a God fearing maid servant. You left your children in the hands of a woman who fears God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what God wants to bless his people with and, and this what he blesses us with. He wants to pass it on through the nations to the world. And he says that it is your men servants and your maid servants on whom I will pour out my spirit on those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And verse 31. The sun shall be darkened then the moon will turn into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Verse 32. And it shall come to pass and I'm excited with this verse. Hallelujah. It's, it's not about the Holy Spirit just in us. It's not about just the Holy Spirit falling upon nations. It's not about the Spirit of God falling upon all flesh. And it says, and all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be and all by Spirit shall fall upon and all who call upon the name of the Lord and all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hey, church, aren't we waiting for that time when everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved? When the Spirit of God will come and move and stir the city and move the city. We've been praying for the city. We've been praying for the nation. Hallelujah. Don't be surprised. God's visitation is going to come upon this city and upon this nation. Hallelujah. And you and I are going to reap the harvest. Hallelujah. Because the harvest is plenty, but the laborers is few. God is going to remove you out from all of your running business you're running after things that will not last you're running after things that are in vain you're running after things that will perish but God is saying he will call you to the end time harvest hallelujah and this is the call of the church this morning to take part of the end time harvest to win souls and that when we stand in the gap and intercede we see that God will do amazing things hallelujah you know people anywhere they hear Joel 2, they quickly come to 28. Joel, Joel 2, 28. And God said, in these last days, he'll pour out his spirit. Oh, they know the words, you know, memorize it in and out. But this morning, I'm going to take you to God's word where we need to do something for that to happen. People like to take the net result, but they don't like to take their part, the hard work. God said, Joel 2, 28. One day it will happen. It will happen. Sure. No doubt. Whatever God said, it will happen. What concerns us is to do our part. Many people are trying to say, will God do it? Some believe. But God wants us to do our part. Hallelujah. So what did it say? And it will come to pass. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you excited about it? Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, your uncle, your aunt, that neighbor in your village, that troublemaker across the street calls upon the name of Jesus and will be saved. Amen. Hallelujah, your loved ones, your grandparents, your relatives, your first cousins to n, n number of cousins, your whoever it is, they shall be saved. Hallelujah. You know one thing? When people come to the saving knowledge of God, what a joy it is. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. You see, if our, our treasure is in heaven, even the heart will also be in heaven. So the Bible says that when one sinner turns away from the way of error or the way of sin and comes to the way of the Lord, there's rejoicing in heaven. The question mark is, is that, is there rejoicing on earth? Is there rejoicing in the house of God? Amen. amen. How many people came to the Lord? Amen. Last, last week we led a few people to the Lord. We were excited. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why my wife Nita came and she shared. That was a part of the praise report. We went to a house. Five of them were there. And all five got saved. Hallelujah. You see, people getting saved is the greatest praise report. Because that is the great commission that Jesus has commissioned you and me with. Hallelujah. You want success in your life. You want to see breakthroughs in your life. You want to see financial breakthroughs in your life. You know, people have got it wrong. They are working overtime for financial breakthrough. <laughs> you work for the Lord. Amen. You win souls. Amen. And God will provide you much more than you can think or imagine. Amen. You see, Jesus told Peter, the coin is in the fish's mouth. Amen. That was symbolic of fishing men. God has called us to be fishers of men. And when you and I fish for men, he'll take care of every need. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, God will either provide you the finances or he'll provide that which you are looking for. Hallelujah. God will either provide you the finance to buy what you desire or he will gift you what you desire. Hallelujah. Whatever and however it happens, the source is God. Hallelujah. Our trust needs to be in God. We don't need to tell people what we need. We need to tell Jesus what we need. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're excited to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. God has something amazing. Amen. And so this morning, I want to speak on the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now we see that Joel had prophesied that when we turn to God with all our heart in fasting and prayer, then the Lord would be zealous and compassionate and would pour out His Spirit on us. I want you to turn to Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. The same chapter. What? How? 
with all your heart. Amen. Fasting. Yes. And weeping. And with mourning. Hallelujah. You see, when we come to him with a heart that is repentive. You know, many times people pray says, change that one's heart, change this one's heart, change that one's attitude. God says, hold on. I promise you I will do it. But first, I like to talk to you. Would you like to come and repent? Would you like to come and cry before me? Would you like to come and mourn before me? So that I can turn your mourning into dancing. I can turn your sorrow into joy. As you repent, and then you repent for others. Amen? Hallelujah. The prayer that we pray these days, we've been praying for the city. As we begin, we praise the Lord, we worship Him, and then we repent. For our sins, for our wrongdoings, for our shortcomings, for our failure, for our lethargic net, for our spiritual blindness. We pray and we repent from all and turn from our wickedness. Then we release others. We forgive others. Then God will come and heal the land. Hallelujah. He will heal us because we are part of the land. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, what is Joel speaking about? He's speaking about the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When we turn to God in fasting, prayer, mourning, what will God do? He will be zealous and he will be compassionate and will pour out his spirit upon us. That is, I, I gave you references from Joel 2.12, Joel 2.18 and Joel 2.28. These three verses put together. What would happen? The Lord would be zealous and compassionate and will pour out his spirit upon us and all flesh. Hallelujah. And it will come to pass, he said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. What did Jesus tell his disciples? He told his disciples to tarry in prayer. When he went to heaven to be with the father, he said, wait till I give you the promise, till I give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then the spirit would enable them, amen, to receive that. When they received power from above, their lives would be transformed. And what is he saying in Luke 24, 49? Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. Hallelujah. Now you see in the Old Testament where Joel prophesied this, the, the power of the Spirit would come upon people who were chosen by God at certain times, in certain seasons, for certain purposes. But what is, uh, what is the New Testament speaking? It's speaking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so the church is called to corporate prayer. Corporate prayer brings a breakthrough. Hallelujah. You see, the most, uh, the most uh, poor turn turn out normally or usually they say is for prayer. But I declare and I prophesy, amen, as we are coming close to the 26th of this of May to, to come together and pray for the global day of prayer. You know, GDOP, that's the global day of prayer is on the 26th of May, 2012. Hallelujah. I received a mail from St. Martin's and they said, would you like to come and pray for two nations? Ooh, I said, yes. I send them a mail, Saving Grace Global Ministries. We're going to pray for two nations. Please bring your prayer in PowerPoint presentation on the 26th at 8 in the night. Done. Hallelujah. We don't want to be those churches who are waiting for the picnic or for the retreat only. We need to wait for prayer. And we need to move in prayer. And when we pray, God starts moving. When the church prayed, the prison doors open. When the church prays, city is transformed. When the church prays and repents, there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You see, our children start prophesying. Amen. Our men servants and maid servants, they see, they start prophesying. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the young men see visions of the old man dreams, dreams, you know, amazing things. And the heavens and the earth show signs of his glory. Hallelujah. God is calling the church to come in a time like this for prayer together. And Jesus promised and he said, you shall receive power from above. And as in written in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, you shall receive power from above. And to receive power from above, we have to get connected to above. 
to get connected to above we need to humble ourselves we need to repent we need to turn from our wicked ways we need to come out of our lethargicness and we should be spiritually we should be spiritually active it is the holy spirit that will enable us to be spiritually active you don't need 50 people to motivate you to pray you need the holy spirit to motivate you to pray god is looking for that one man and when this one 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 get together the fire of god falls down hallelujah when this one 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 get together the glory of god will come hallelujah it's not about singing the glory of god it's about carrying the glory of God it's about living in the glory of God it's about declaring the glory of God it's about seeing the glory of God it's about seeing that the glory of the knowledge of God shall cover all the earth as the waters cover the sea hallelujah more than 75 percent of this planet is covered by water hallelujah and what are we declaring we're declaring father in Jesus name more than three-fourths of the world shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea now we need to rise up in faith and declare and go a step ahead saying, Father, in Jesus' name, I declare that this whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. God is waiting. The Bible says all creation longs for the manifestations of the sons of God. Hallelujah. You see, creation is waiting for you to declare so that creation will obey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because God in these last days is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Is there a delay? If there's a delay, it's because God wants the church to repent. Is there a delay? It looks like a delay. God is calling the church to be humble. If my people who are called by my name, humble. You know, it's very good to memorize verses. But greater than that is the need of revelation of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. I have good news for you this morning. Devil knows more scripture than us. But he has no revelation. You know, revelation belongs to you and me because he lost it. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong to, yes, to our God. But that which is revealed, how is it revealed? By his spirit. Who's the re revealer? The Holy Spirit. Who's the teacher? Who's the counselor? Who's our guide? Who's our comfort? Who's our strength? Who's our best friend? Is that true? Yes. Praise God. If that is true, praise God. If the Holy Spirit is your best friend, you should be chatting with him the most. You should be sending him the most messages. Hallelujah. Because he's waiting for you. You speak to him, he'll speak back to you. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our best friend. Hallelujah. Would you like to grieve your best friend? Never. Never. You know why? He's so good that he will never grieve you and me. Amen. The Holy Spirit is also a gentleman. And that is why many times people take the Holy Spirit for granted. When the Holy Spirit is speaking, they just tend to do something that they feel is right. When the Holy Spirit is, wait, is speaking... All our attention needs to be given to the Holy Spirit. When we give all our attention to the Holy Spirit, we honor God. When we honor God, He honors us. Hallelujah. When He honors us, we don't need to carry butter along to butter anyone. Because God is the glory and the lifter of our head. Amen. When God honors us, the world has to see. When man honors us, you have to call them for the party. And so that, you know, so and so is going to be honored. When God honors, the world will see. Hallelujah. Because you know something, man's lifting up has limitations. God's lifting up has no limitations. Hallelujah. So what is God saying? He's saying, I want you to be sensitive to my spirit. How can we be sensitive to the spirit of God? As we humble ourselves, as we 
seek his face as we repent as we turn away from our wicked ways amen it's not about a friday morning it's about saturdays and sundays back to thursdays back to come you come here how you speak over the phone how you relate to your loved ones how you love people what words are the words that you speak are they words of life or are they words of death are they more of blessing or more of curse are they more of judgmental talk are they gossip or slander or backbiting or hatred what is this if these things are done the spirit of god is grieved and the outpouring of the holy spirit is not seen god says he wants to pour out his spirit on all flesh and he will use us amen god will not do anything without us without revealing it to his servants hallelujah and he wants the church to be prepared for this outpouring hallelujah you see because when the outpouring comes we need to go and minister to people yes the holy spirit what if somebody the outpouring just come have you ever experienced in your life you're just praying for someone and they break down i don't know what to do that's the work of the holy spirit just be led by the spirit to speak into their life pray for them speak the word of god lead them to jesus if they don't know the lord because conviction is come conviction is come you see something when the move of the holy spirit is not there it's like you know have you tried have you have you got into a beach not very deep just into the waters knee deep or little higher and you try to walk it's like a lot of resistance have you tried that try to run on the sand it's difficult resistance when we are not led by the spirit everything that we do is a struggle be healed be healed be healed <laughs> i don't want to go to that church that man literally pushes me down you don't need to do that when the holy spirit comes the holy spirit will bring conviction all that you need to share is a gospel to those who don't know those who need a word of prophecy you speak prophecy for thus said the lord he has called you to serve him from your mother's womb he has chosen you the enemy tried to steal you but god marked you and he has called you by name you are his when you walk to the water the fire he shall be with you it shall not burn you neither shall it drown you you shall be his glory you shall go forth in his name not from here but from here to the nations of the world wow prophetic prophetic you see when the spirit of god comes you're prophetic you know saul could not be recognized when the spirit of god came upon him think who is he looks like Saul no but it is Saul because the spirit of god came upon him and he started prophesying was Saul a prophet no he he was in the company of the prophets and he started prophesying you are in the company of the king of kings and the lord of lords you are in the company of the great i am you are in the company of the holy spirit why should you not prophesy give me a good reason why should you not prophesy the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of jesus is within you and me now why should it you and i not prophesy you know because fear is there what i say will it come right or no you are not prophesying for for your name you are prophesying being led by the spirit of god hallelujah hallelujah i prophesied in many unbelievers life when they never knew jesus and things have turned and changed in their lives and they said this is what god has done this is what jesus has done so you see a prophecy is is that gift that god has released upon the church that it's not only for use in the church but others will know that our god is an awesome god the gift of knowledge the gift of wisdom to lead others to the lord the this gift that come from the holy spirit to build the body of christ hallelujah to build the church up hallelujah that is why you need to come to god's house because god speaks here what of wisdom what of knowledge a prophecy a prophetic word god speaks uh, amen through his word and through his servants and through testimonies and through praise reports so praise god because god is preparing the church for his end times and in acts chapter 1 and verse 2 the disciples follow the same pattern as we see in uh, 
in Joel chapter 2 that they waited and God wants his people to wait in prayer. All I want to encourage you this morning is that we must come to pray together. Amen. Ooh, I have good news for you. You might not like it. But we don't have a Sunday service this Sunday. Is that good news? It is good news. I'm happy about it. Because we are going to meet on another day to fast and pray. Ooh, I'm excited about it. Amen? Because we're going to be compensated on another day, but we're going to use that to fast and pray. Amen? And so all of us are coming. I wake up at 4 in the morning go, have to go to work. Come, Holy Spirit will wake you up. You'll be fresh. No dark circles. Come to the house of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. If you are, if you are with dark circles, there are, there are a lot of cosmetics. Don't worry. Amen? God is looking for a change of heart. Amen? Where His people who are called by His name will come and pray. Hallelujah. The toughest thing is prayer. No, when you're led by the Spirit, it's not the toughest thing. It's the most powerful thing. It's the most powerful thing. Who prayed? Moses prayed. Who prayed? Abraham prayed. Who prayed? Daniel prayed. Who prayed? Joel prayed. Who prayed? Isaiah prayed. Who prayed? Jeremiah prayed. Who prayed? Jesus prayed. Who prayed? Peter prayed. Who prayed? Anna prayed for 60 years. Hallelujah. No emails, no reminders. For those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Amen. You know, the sons are interested to do the father's business. Amen. The sons will take care of the father's business. And we will gather together to pray. One of these days in this month during the week. And we will call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And this is the global day of prayer where the whole world is praying together for different nations on the 26th of May 2012. And we will see miracle signs and wonders come to pass. So, the same Peter who was uh, frightened, the same Peter, who was a man who was very uh, impulsive. You know impulsive people? I don't know if you can identify with them. They speak first and think later. <laughs> By the time that thought process is on, the, the project is over. Okay, so Peter said, no, 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 no. You're not going to go. You're not going to get. Shh. Jesus said, get the behind me, Satan. Then Peter said, no, 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 no. You know, I will not with Jesus. I, I will die. I will come with you. And then when the little girl meets, she says, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Who do you say I am? Some say you're the rabbi. Some say you're the prophet. Some say you're good. Some say you're a good man. But I am saying that you are the son of the most. Hey, this is not flesh and blood that has revealed it to you. But God, my father in heaven, hallelujah, has revealed to you. And because you have this revelation, Peter, I shall build my church upon it. Hallelujah. I shall build my church upon this rock. And that rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. Peter also means rock. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you know revelation is for you and me. You know, revelation will keep us fresh always. Revelation will keep us charged. Hallelujah. Revelation will drive away confusion. Hallelujah. Revelation will bring what God has. Revelation will take us deeper to the throne room of grace. Revelation will not keep us in the dark. Revelation will lead us to a deeper vision. Hallelujah. And that is what God wants us to have. Not just surface level. He wants us to go deep within and believe him for great and mighty things. So Peter said, men of Judea, where was he? In Acts, we see in the, in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter said to them in Acts chapter 2, verses 14, 15 and 16, men of Judea, let this be known to you that they are not drunk as you suppose, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. So you see, Peter is saying what Joel spoke in Joel chapter 2 is coming to pass. But I tell you, this morning, that is just part of what Peter saw because it was 120 believers there in Jerusalem and the 3,000 who were added later, that there was a limitation there. But we are living in times where the coming of Jesus is at hand. Hallelujah. And so we see the outpouring is going to increase. God is a God of nations. Hallelujah. Amen. 
and that is why he has called us in psalm chapter 2 and verse 8 he says ask of me and i will give you the nations for your inheritance the ends of the earth as your possession you see god is a god of nations hallelujah and he wants us to be people of nations Hallelujah and then shall he take us to nations if you don't believe that God is a god of nations and you don't ask for nations then you will not declare nations and he will not give you nations you will be where you are God doesn't want us to be in the rut of life he wants us to be free he set us he sent his son Jesus to set us free so that we will not only worship him but we will be those who will transform nations by his spirit to worship him the king of kings and the lord of lords hallelujah yahweh hallelujah that the world will worship yahweh what is your desire what is your prayer what's the beat of your heart what's the cry of your heart yahweh that the nations will worship that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of the father above and i can sense the power of the holy spirit falling upon the lives of the church upon your god's people this morning that you will go out and you will learn to host the holy spirit you will learn to host the holy spirit you will not talk about yourself you will talk about jesus you will talk about the father you will talk about the kingdom you will talk about the holy spirit you will talk about the word of god you will not talk about what you have accomplished you will talk about the finished work of calvary hallelujah what you and i can accomplish has limitations what jesus has accomplished uh, hallelujah he has won the victory over satan over sin and over death and he is lord of all hallelujah and so peter said these men are not drunk but this is what joel spoke and church let me tell you this morning as i close what joel has spoken is yet to come to pass in all totality before i can close what is stopping that or what is it that will help quicken what god has spoken when the church comes together in prayer humbles himself seeking his face and say lord let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven the knowledge of the glory of god will fall upon this earth amen as the waters cover the sea and even greater than that and the power of the holy spirit the outpouring of the holy spirit will fall in a mighty way amen what did jesus what did peter mean to say when he said that he had spoken of joel this is written in joel was what peter said what did he mean what did joel speak about joel he emphasized he spoke about god would pour out his spirit but with certain conditions amen and the condition was the the net result of god pouring out his spirit depended on conditions that we his people would repent humble ourselves walk a holy life make a choice to walk the narrow path because the broad way is really broad you know the broad way is one in which you can stagger but the narrow way needs attention it needs sharpness it needs discernment it needs clarity it needs revelation it needs connection to be led by the spirit of god hallelujah god has not called us to walk the broad way we have left the broad way amen, amen. hallelujah amen. if there's someone who's not left the broad way let me lead them to the lord this morning you see we all were in the broad way of life do whatever you want saturday night do whatever you want amen there was no fever on saturday night you could do whatever you want there were different types of fever amen but god brought us out of darkness into the kingdom of his son to walk the narrow path you know and it is only the holy spirit that will help us to walk that narrow path we are living in challenging times church i tell you as a word of warning there are times that are going to come that our faith our very faith will be challenged there are times going to come where it will be shaken up we'll be shaken up there are times when our faith will be tested 
very strongly, very strongly. One might be in desperate need and say, this is the way. This is the way that the devil offers. Will you take what the devil gives right now or will you wait for God? And we need to gather faith. We need to muster faith. We need to build in faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we continue to spend time with God, I say key, the, the prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. I don't want to, I'm not keen in getting into anyone's houses or private lives. I'm not calling you to account. All that I'm saying this morning is, let your prayer life get more stronger. I'm not here to do a survey, how many of us pray and how long we pray. All I'm saying is that, spend time at the feet of Jesus. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for the needs of others. First repent, turn from our wicked ways. And God will bring healing. What has not been done in years will be done in no time in your life. That which you feel are like blocks and hurdles, God himself will move it away. Because he is the way maker. He is pouring out his spirit. He is willing. He has planned. And he will do it. He will pour out his spirit on. How much on you? How much more on you and me? God is willing to pour out his spirit on all flesh. How much more is he willing to pour it out into you? But pastor, I have the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled more and more. Hallelujah. To be filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to be used by the Holy Spirit in what God has deposited through Jesus. So that it's like a cup. When we empty ourselves, we will be filled again. Hallelujah. As we empty ourselves, we'll be filled again. As we pray and pray for others, we'll be filled again. As we lead others to the Lord, we'll be filled again. As we minister to them, we'll be filled again. We might come again. We might come across people who are, who are possessed by demons. But as we release, we'll be filled again. Because it's the Spirit of God that He's pouring. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us. Why? To release that anointing. Hallelujah. So that he will give us more. Amen. And this whole world shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Now so we see. So Peter was not only teaching out how to release the Holy Spirit. But Peter was also teaching to seek the Holy Spirit. When we do these things. We can seek the power of the Holy Spirit to fall in a supernatural way. Hallelujah. And so as I close, there's a down payment that Joel promised in Joel chapter 2. And what is a down payment? You know, a down payment is made as a promise. The down payment is made as an initial payment. And the full payment is made and kept to one's word to receive what it has been paid for. And so the down payment that Joel spoke about, it says, Joel 2.28, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Amen. And what is the part of that? Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know the Lord here this morning? I want to see your hands. How many of you keep your hands up if you are filled with the Holy Spirit? You can speak in tongues. What are baptized? Okay, after the service, I'm going to pray for you. If you want the gift of prophecy, I'm going to pray for you this, uh, this morning. Okay, after the service. Because there's another service waiting, but I'm going to pray for you. If you, if you desire the gift to prophesy, I'm going to pray over you and it will be released in your life. Amen? Not for your name. Not to say that, you know, you make a tag and a magnetic thing here, I'm a prophet. Nobody cares. We are all prophets. We are all prophets. Some have the hold the office of a prophet. But we all have an anointing that comes from above. When the spirit of God leads us, we prophesy. That's what I said. When Saul was in the company of prophets, Saul was not a prophet. But he prophesied. Hey, how is that? Because he got connected. When you get connected to the Holy Spirit in that gift, you start prophesying. Amen. You see, if... When, when the Spirit of God leads us to prophesy, we speak life. Amen. We can prophesy over our children. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't want to prophesy over your children. You prophesy over your children, your children will honor you. Don't wait to give some million mashrik certificate or some certificate. Oh, my father is great. 
You prophesy over them. You speak life. You say you are so and so. You know, the are not, not behaving like a donkey or a monkey. You are the son of God. You are the child of the Most High God. You are the servant of God. I declare you are an evangelist. I declare that you are a teacher of God's word and God will honor your word. God might take you to heaven, but he will honor he, the word that you have spoken. You know, God is waiting for us to speak. God is waiting for us to prophesy because he has released his spirit. Hallelujah. You know, many people, they, they are many years in the Lord, no prophesying. Somebody else come three weeks ago, they start. He's prophesying three weeks. Gift was given. It's called rust. WD-40 will not help. You need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's junk. It's stuck. That is not going to help you. You need the fire of God. You need to believe. And so you need to come to your knees and say, God, whatever you spoke to me, I believe. You know, that prayer is a prayer of repentance. Because it goes in line with what the disciples say, help our unbelief. That is what they prayed. Jesus, help us. Unbelief. The church also needs to pray that prayer. We all we are very spiritual. We believe this. God help us. We have not believed. We need to repent. You know, we need to repent and ask God forgiveness. Because if we hurt someone, we meet them one day. Sorry, brother, please, sorry, please forgive me. When we do it to Jesus, ah, he loves me with an everlasting love. Whatever happens, he will forgive me. So actually I'm advertising that I take all of his love, mercy and grace for granted. That I don't even have time to tell him I'm sorry. Learn from the life of the prodigal son. When he wanted, desired to eat those pots what the pigs ate and could not even get that, he said, I have sinned against heaven and against my father. He did not say I have sinned against my father and heaven. He says I have sinned against heaven, God first. How many of us have asked God for forgiveness, for lethargicness, for complacency? How many of us have asked? He is a compassionate God. He is a forgiving God. He understands me. He will forgive me. Hey, don't ask forgiveness and he will forgive you. Then why don't you forgive others who have not asked you forgiveness? For, to forgive them, you want them to ask you forgiveness. Then you will forgive. But when it comes to God, he understands me. Even if I didn't ask, he forgave me. Hey, that lie comes from the pit of hell. That revelation comes from demons. We need to ask him forgiveness because the Bible says when we come to him and we confess our, we confess our, what happens? Jesus is and he is and what helps us to wash? The blood of Jesus washes and cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness. And that is why when we, we must ask Jesus forgiveness. If you have taken his house for granted, you must ask forgiveness. Don't call the pastor. Forgive me, I didn't come to God's house. What can I do? You ask Jesus forgiveness. It's not my house, this is his house. I'm not 24-7 available to bless you. I've spoken the word of God. You take it and walk in it. 24-7 is Jesus who's available. So you've not grieved me. You've grieved the spirit of God. So you ask God forgiveness. Lord, forgive me, Lord. I want to be found in your presence like King David said, in your presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand are pleasures forevermore. And this is the down payment that was prophesied. Amen. So now let me tell you as I close, sorry for the third time, that Joel, that Peter's, uh, Peter's word is in line with Joel's promise and that as to come to global fulfillment. You see, uh, when it came the time of Peter, it was 120 and extended to 3,000. But now it has a global dimension. And that is where God is using the church. Hallelujah. The, the prophecy of Joel has a global dimension. Hallelujah. Where the whole world will receive the, the, the knowledge of the glory of God and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. As I close this morning, I want to ask ourselves, are we prepared? To allow the Holy Spirit to flow through our lives. Or are there blocks? Are there hurdles? Is there unrepentance? Is there pride? Is there jealousy? Is there hatred? Is there anything that comes from the pit of hell or from demonic influence that is stopping us to allow the Holy Spirit 
to flow through our lives. If that is it, you need to repent this morning because that is the message that God spoke through Joel before Joel 2.28. I tell you the truth, we don't have right to declare Joel 2.28, which is the net result of what God has spoken before we do what we are called to. How can we? What right we have? For people, if my people who are called by my name, if they don't humble themselves, if they don't pray, if they don't seek my face, if they don't turn from their wicked ways, then how will I look from heaven? I will not look from heaven. I will not forgive them their sins. I will not heal their land. So you see, what is the key to it? The key for the net result to work is for us to respond in prayer. Amen? And this is my message this morning, that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will begin through prayer. You all want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Now the yes has become less because you came to know the secret. You came to know that you have to come to pray. You want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Yes. I, like you pray for the city, you will prosper. You lead people to the Lord, you will prosper. You pray, you will prosper. Amen. You need, don't need to go to the net for stock exchange or, or whatever it is. You know to prosper. Praise God if God gives you that. But you need to be found in God's house. You know, Psalm 92 speaks about flourishing. It begins from being planted in God's house, not potted in God's house. God is not potting people. God is planting people. So if you're planted in God's house, you will flourish in his courts. What does it mean? You will serve in his courts. Hallelujah. What does it mean? That when you serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in his courts, he will flourish you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll take care of it. Promotion will come. Increment will come. Bonuses will come. Provision will come. Your children will be safe. You'll be in good health and strength. You will not lack any good thing. The sun will not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Your going out will be blessed. Your coming in will be blessed. Your rising up will be blessed. Your sitting down will be blessed. All that you put your hands to, you will prosper. You will find good sleep. Hallelujah. There'll be no spirit of emergencies that will come and hit you. Everything will be in divine order in your life. You will have the favor of God. Where you go, you will carry the favor of God. Where you go, you will carry the power of God. Where you go, you'll carry the anointing of God. Where you go, you will walk in authority. Where you go, things will change. Hallelujah. Because you are changed. For things to change, you have to change. We have to change. And that is why we need to pray. Pray, 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 pray. There's every revival has begun with prayer. Amen, amen. And revival here will begin by prayer. Amen. Then revival here will come because of prayer. And revival outside will come by prayer. Hallelujah. If my people who are called by my name, amen, humble yourself and come to the table of the Lord this morning, because the Lord has caused us to walk in victory. His favor is upon us and he wants us to be that channel of his through which his spirit will flow. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come and reign on us. Come and reign through us. Come and reign in us. Hallelujah. Let this be your prayer. Holy Spirit, reign on me. Reign in me and reign through me. God bless you.